Peace, everybody. Welcome back to my podcast. I appreciate you all for joining me again. And this is episode five. If you haven't listened to the previous episodes, make sure you go back and listen to them, please. Today, we have a special guest, Tiara. She's joining us today. Going to tell us a little bit about herself. Tiara, you want to go ahead and introduce everybody? Yes. Hi. First off, um, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on your podcast. I'm thank loving you. it so far. Really enjoying your content. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm Tierra Alicia. I'm a content creator. Um, I create content pretty much centered all around spirituality, metaphysics, consciousness, all of that. Um, I really am just one of those people that is a seeker of truth. I'm a student of the universe. And, you know, throughout my journey, I just like uh, sharing what I learned with other people and, and seeing it improve their lives and improve the quality of their consciousness. So that's ultimately what I'm passionate about and what I'm trying to like deliver out into the world. Uh, I agree with you. Like, that's the same thing where I started the podcast is see if I can open the minds of other people and see if I can help other people out there. Um, that's the reason why I have these gifts. Um, this reason why we all have gifts is not to just use it to our own advantage, but also to use it for other people's advantage. Right. Um, so I think that it's great that you're uh, using them uh, to your advantage. Uh, so I know we talked about a little bit online on Instagram. Do you want to talk about some of the things that you've been experiencing uh, with your gifts. Um, I know you said you started to hear uh, some tones. Is it uh, when you're awake or uh, when you're sleeping? Yes. So um, I would say it started when I was actually really young. So similar to you, I think you talked about it in episode one, um, where you would hear different tones and frequencies like in your ears. And um, I actually remember telling my mom about it when I was a kid, funny enough. And she took me to the doctor because she thought something was wrong with me. Right. Um, so, you know, I think that kind of uh, conditioned me in some way. And um, after that, it kind of um, disappeared for a while. And then it reappeared, um, I would say, like in my mm, kind of like late teenage years, early 20s. And I really just didn't think anything of it. I sort of just wrote it off. Um, but I did have a sequence of like dream experiences. Um, typically when I'm in the like hypnagogic or hypnopompic brainwave state, meaning like the state that you are, um, your body is at rest, but your mind is still awake. Um, so when you're either falling asleep or when you're just waking up. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some trippy experiences there, um, as well as in dream states. Um, I have a lot of like prophetic dreams, precognitive dreams, premonition dreams, um, and I see light orbs. So that's kind of where I'm at in my journey right now. Okay. Yeah. So I would say that, uh, so you're basically getting a uh, clear audience. Um, so you're hearing messages or tones um, from the spirit world. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. When I'm awake, I would say, um, more so tones and frequencies but i actually have heard audible voices when i was in the hypnagogic and hypnopompic brainwave states okay um and yeah i mean we can talk about that a little bit more but i i believe the few times that it's happened uh -huh. um i was in communication with my guides uh -huh. Um, and then there is a particular time where I believe one of my ancestors was speaking to me because it was in Spanish and I have um, a Puerto Rican background, like Puerto Rican heritage. So, um, yeah, I think that was kind of the occurrences I've had in terms of clear audience. But in my waking state, I feel like it's still in the very beginning stages. I'm thinking maybe I need to like raise my vibrational frequency a little bit in order to... Um, you know, in order for them to communicate with me a little bit better in my physical waking state. Mm. I, I I didn't mention this before um, when I was explaining in my other podcast, um, the different um, types of mediumships. Um, this is some information that I should have mentioned, but our abilities actually come from our subconscious mind. Um, and being a medium, you're actually connected to your subconscious at a very high level, more than the average person. So the information that you're getting is sparks of your subconscious leaking out into your conscious mind. Um, so common misconception, everyone can be a medium because it's a, it's a tool. It's a gift that everyone shares, right? It's just, um, you have to be able to, uh, work on it and study it. Right. Um, there's a lot of, I've met a lot of people who, um, over the years studied to be a medium and are now have gifts, use those gifts to um, 
uh, better their lives, better other people's lives, anything like that. So there is that's a muscle that you can use because we're all connected to the spirit world at the end of the day because you have a spirit, you have an essence. That essence is connected to the spirit world. You just you're living in this plane in just flesh, right? Yeah. So for the tones itself, um, um, there's messages within those tones. And like you said, you will have to kind of raise your vibration. And that's basically done uh, a lot through meditation um, to be able to take your gifts and to master into something else. It takes a lot of a lot of time, yeah. uh, a lot of dedication. It is it's not like something that's going to happen overnight. Um, some yeah. people um, like myself are ju- it's just uh they're just it's their gift to be able to use it at any time any time of the day or in their advantage um there is times where of course you're not connected to the spirit world 24 7 so it's like i'm not walking outside and seeing a bunch of spirits walking around i can turn it off absolutely um, I can walk around and my mind could be somewhere else, right? Because it's fueled by my subconscious mind. So I can walk around and my conscious mind can take control and I have to go to work and I have to visit my family and I have to clean. So I won't pay attention to it, but some days I might wake up and feel more connected to my inner self, to my spirituality than, than other days. And then I might get uh, messages from someone or um, images that I, I don't know where it comes from, um, stuff like that. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, I want to say from your standpoint, uh, you're seeing orbs. That's how I started as well for me. I started seeing little things, kind of a blur, um, started hearing a lot of tones over and then matter of like months, maybe, maybe a year, um, of me trying to pay attention to them. That's when I started actually to hear the voices. And then I started paying attention to the orbs and then they started to, uh, manifest themselves as physical forms right mm. i'm not saying that everyone who's experiences is going to experience clairvoyance which it's which i am is what you're going you know you can i can see and hear them and talk to them um not everyone would experience that they might just only hear names um voices like you said you can hear maybe a voice or something like that um from either your dreams or whatever um it might just be that no problem but that is a very, very, very strong tool that you have. And you can definitely use that in your advantage. Speaking, um, like uh, being able to talk to your ancestors, being able to talk to your spirit guides when you're asleep, when you're dreaming, or when you're in this dream state, is very, very powerful. Because when you're falling into that state, you know, your subconscious mind is now taking over. You know, your conscious mind is asleep. Your subconscious is taking over. That's why we have very vivid dreams and people are like, Oh, I had this crazy dream yesterday, uh, last night. You know, it's not your conscious mind doing it, it's your subconscious trying to give you information. It's trying to do a lot of things. Um, I know that we spoke, um, I think it was like a couple weeks ago, right? Um, Yeah. And we're talking about um, a video that you shared for your podcast. And I mentioned there was an ancestor of yours um, in the podcast with you. Yep. Yep. Um, (laughs) And like I said it was it wasn't a a thing where um I was looking for it I was just watching your video and I'm like who is this lady um um it's an image that popped up because I wasn't physically there near you to see that she was in the room but it was a presence there that I can feel and once I felt the presence I knew that it was female and then the image of what she looked like popped in my head and kind of how she felt at that moment um (laughs) <laughs> I'm seeing light orbs as you're as you're saying this right now, Art. <laughs> <laughs> she might she's be like, like, yeah, yeah, give yeah, me props. <laughs> exactly, yeah, she's liking it, right? So yeah. it's, <laughs> um, I kind of felt how she felt in that moment. And the reason why I was able to feel her emotional state at that moment is because I'm, um, of the other gifts I have, and I talked about that in my, um, I think, previous uh, podcast as well, Impasse. Um, I'm able to uh, medium empath. I'm able to feel the emotions of spirits and everything. So they don't have to be in the room um, with me. They can be somewhere far and I can just feel a presence uh, in that room with someone or feel a presence somewhere. And I will automatically be tuned into that emotion of that spirit. It's very, very hard to control. Very, very hard to determine if it's mine. 
emotions or if someone else's emotions right so yeah um, for sure yeah um so let's talk about i know i'm talking a lot (laughs) um let's talk about something that i've noticed from you though um your gifts uh for spell work Mm -hmm. um i can sense that about you i think the information that i'm getting um that i've actually felt a while back when we first met i think you find it very easy to manifest things that you want and some people are like oh you know anyone can do that yes anyone can do that but you actually personally it's very easy for you like anything that you envision that you want for yourself you're able to go ahead and get it and it's more than just manifestation it's actually the power that you have actually in your in your probably lineage lineage um there are witches um and people might say witches are is a terrible thing but they're not um it's actually a good thing because uh they just gave it a bad name over time mm-hmm. but uh they use their gifts to um help people to cure people to um fix people's problems um to give themselves good luck or to get things for themselves which is not a bad thing Um, Did you know that about yourself? Yes, it's something that I definitely, so I I think maybe we should talk about this. Mm -hmm. Um, I first want to preface this with the fact that I do want to agree with what you were saying earlier. Like, Mm -hmm. I believe that through our unconscious, we are all sort of connected to the, you know, God, divine source, power, you know, whatever people want to interpret that as. And that's why we're able to channel and download this information from these fields of consciousness that we're all connected to. Um, So definitely agree with you on that. And that's why it's sort of a muscle that we have to exercise. Um, And we're given these like tools throughout our journey to exercise them, but not a lot of us pay attention to them because they're such subtle hints Um, And you kind of have to decode them and like pick up on them. And I think in the way that I'm sort of awakening my, you know, third eye and activating it right now is I'm being encouraged to decode and kind of figure out and give meaning to certain symbols. That way my guides or, you know, whatever higher realm benevolent beings that communicate with me are able to communicate with me on an energetic level. Because it's not like they're always going to speak to you, you know, in English, in person, you know, the way that they may manifest for you. Um, For some of us others, like, they might just only talk to us in terms of symbolisms or Mm -hmm. motifs or archetypes. Um, So that's kind of where like I'm at in my journey. So just prefacing that with what I'm about to say with this little story. Um, I used to have this reoccurring dream when I was a kid and I've talked about it before on like other pieces of content and um, other podcasts and stuff but I I had this reoccurring dream and you've might have heard of this too we we met on Clubhouse so I think you might remember this story Um, I dreamt that I lived in this like town and I had a house and there was a big field behind it like I remember it clear as day Um, and there was a house that lived you know, kind of far out from this field that I could see that this woman lived in. And I was terrified. Like for some reason, I felt this deep fear from this woman that lived in this house. And I always felt that she had this like witch energy to her. Um, But to the point where it was kind of like a darker energy, like I was just absolutely scared and terrified. And I had this reoccurring dream as a kid, like all the time. And every time I thought she was going to come out of her house or I saw her come out of her house, I would run back into my house. And my mom, that is actually my mom in this lifetime, um, was sort of my mother in that dream. Just she obviously didn't look the same, you know. So um, it was this weird dream that I always had. And now what that kind of represents for me is like it could have been this deep unconscious uh, like sort of magical mystic woman that sort of lived inside me that I was almost scared to um, bring out of me when I was a kid just because of the um, you know social constructs and you know belief systems and programming that you're sort of given as a child but then also I sort of connected to a possible past life thing too Um, but 
you know, it does make sense to me why this sort of like sleeping untouched part of me kind of was fearful to me at first because, you know, in our society, like magic and witches and being able to talk to the dead and um, all of these things are seen as like scary things, you know, they put it in scary movies like, you know, possession and like all these other things. So you're sort of brought up in the society to like fear it. And then we sort of turn that muscle off through fear, through trauma, through whatever over time. And it sort of like deactivates your third eye and it deactivates your natural intuition and your psychic abilities. Right. I I definitely agree. I was going to (laughs) say, I didn't want to cut you off because I was going to say, well, would you think of the possibility of that? that was your past life self you know that was something yeah. she was your she was you in your past life um and yeah like you, you were afraid of her um because you were afraid of that concept of actually being a witch right um, yeah that's, that's what we're programmed to think is that when people hear witches they're like oh you know burn them at the stake hang them you know exactly it's, it's this very uh very violent uh information that they have against uh witches which puts me to a different uh, point of view. Um, so I don't know if you know, but witches also have a very connection, of course, to the spirit realm. So the reason why you may be a clairvoyant, I'm sorry, clairaudience, is because you have that ancestry uh, gift to a witch. Um, so the reason why you're able to uh, even speak to your ancestors and um, you know talk to your guides, it's not... Um, it's something that probably comes easy for you. Um, and witches are able to tap into that spirit world. Of course, of course they're able to um, even uh, uh, channel um, spirits to come and, and, and do things and uh, get information from them as well. Um, I've known that um, from a lot of uh, people that I've known in my lifetime. Um, I know a person in my personal life uh, she actually can channel um, spirits to her. And she does it uh, only out of like just entertainment, just mm. to want to connect with them, to talk with them about get, seeing a different perspective of their life and how they live their life. Um, it's not, a, which is not a bad thing, it's a great thing. Um, but she does it because she's able to use um, spells to um, use it in her advantage, right? Mm. Um, so have you ever thought about Um, honing these gifts that you feel as though you have? I have. um, I think I will get to that point eventually Mm because I've been told I have that ability as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there are still certain like subconscious fears that I have just from, you know, programming past experiences, that sort of thing. Sure. Um, But yeah, I think once I get to the point in my journey where I'm, I feel I'm really comfortable with my intuitive abilities and I'm able to kind of have a little bit more control over them um, I probably will get to that point um, but yeah I'm, I'm kind of like in this place where I just I get these signs and I get pulled to do these different things and I just follow it you know if it feels good I just follow it that's good. kind of where I'm at good. that's good and that and you know let's like just like you talked about from your spirit guides, you know, they're not going to give you straight up answers. They're going to give you symbolism stuff. So, oh, yeah. So they a always. lot of those, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they always like that could be symbolism. Um, a lot of information that you're getting and you're thinking that, oh, this is, you know, maybe coming from yourself. I mean, you're thinking about it and you're coming up with these ideas, but it could be your, your, your spirit guides channeling this information like, hey, this is exactly who you need to be, right? Mm-hmm. This is exactly who you are. Because, my spirit guides um, podcast I talked about your spirit guides are assigned to you right before you're born Mm -hmm. Uh, they know exactly your path on what to take their mission their whole job is to steer you on that path now they don't interfere unless um, to a lot of day to day stuff unless you ask them of course but like I sort of said in my podcast that they love to do things for you when you ask them they love it they just that's the reason why they're here right you yeah know, they do love it <laughs> they love it like when you ask them you know you ask you a guy that protects you your protection guy right you say i need you a protection i'm going to go out i'm going to have a road trip i'm driving by myself i need your protection for this road 
you know, you say that before you get into the car, listen, that spirit guy is like, I got you, don't worry. You know, they, they got your back. Um, they want us to see you succeed. They want things uh, great for you. They see you as um, kind of uh, nurturing, like they're like they're, you are the baby, you know? Yep. And because um, they seen you as a baby and they were there. Um, um, I didn't mention this in my podcast, but you know, some people are, some people, I don't think anybody knows this, that some people can share um, spirit guides. I didn't realize that for a long time that yep. some people share spirit, people out here share spirit guides. So you could be friends with somebody or you could be in a partnership with somebody and their spirit guide could be um, your spirit guide. And that's because maybe in the past life, you, your, your, your partner or your friend or whatever in that past life uh, and your spirit guide were connected in some type of way. So when you guys move on to this life, you guys have that connection and your spirit guides are there. Okay. Yeah. And our spirit guides kind of operate on a different, you know, time space continuum. So, yes. you know, for us on the 3D realm, time is very linear, past, mm-hmm. you know, present, future, um, or linear, I meant to say. Mm-hmm. But for them, it's all happening all at once. Exactly. Exactly. I've I've met some spirit guides, and it wasn't my own spirit guides. Um, but I met some spirit guides where in this realm, their age would be over seven hundred years old, um, yeah. and they'd be like, "Whoa," you know. And I and me personally, when I met the spirit guide, I can feel their the 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 kind of how ancient they were, and I was like, "Whoa, this is weird. I've never felt something so old before, like ancient." <laughs> and yeah, and come to find out, they were, you know, in this realm, 700 and like 10 or 13 years old. I'm like, wow. You know, you have a lot of power. You have a lot of um, wisdom with you, you know. So whoever has that spirit guide is very, very lucky, you know. So. Yeah. And they take a lot of energy to channel as mm-hmm. well. So it's like you do have to really exercise your intuitive muscle to even be able to perceive or understand or communicate what they're trying to communicate with you. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of yeah. time. I, I, like I like I said, I've only known two of my spirit guides. <laughs> I know yeah. I have four. I only know two of them, and they and one of them she doesn't tell me. Like I said in my pet in my last podcast, um, my spirit guide podcast, she doesn't tell me her name. And I was about <laughs> to say like I've asked her every single time to maybe see if I can slip up and get her to say something to me because she doesn't talk at all and she wow. doesn't speak because I think she her whole goal is to have me is to sit with me and give me her positive energy in order to figure out problems that I'm having. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would meditate and go into this, uh, like I call it my mind palace, this safe space where she's at and have her just sit with me and I will ask her questions she wouldn't answer. And then I will come up with the answer from the questions that I ask her. And it's just her sitting and being positive and, uh, and giving me the power to be able to figure out information. Um, but yeah, she doesn't say anything. Um, <laughs> I actually had a, a, a Reiki healer, uh, Reiki healing done back in August, which was amazing. Listen, if anybody out there has never got a Reiki healer, get one, get one. Okay. Uh, get one that can do your Akashic records, um, who were able to dig in into your, your, your past life or and, and are able to do a soul retrieval and able to fix something that happened to you in your life where, you know, you experienced trauma um, and they're able to uh, take a piece of yourself that experienced trauma and uh, bring it back to yourself. So make you whole again. Um, but doing a Reiki healing, um, of course, you know, you're blindfolded and, you know, you have a bunch of stones um, uh, around you, um, actually placed on you. Your hands are on a bunch of stones. There's stones like connected to your head. It's everywhere, right? It's amazing uh, feeling. You can feel like a lot of energy. And um, of course, me being a medium, she um, she actually asked if anybody spirits, ancestors, uh, spirit guides, and ancestors are can come on my behalf. And when she said that, Tierra, listen, mm-hmm. when I told you that all I can hear was maybe like a hundred voices say my name at one time (laughs) and come into the room. It was a crazy thing. It was like, whoa, it was a bunch of people here. It's a party up in there. (laughs) It was, it was a party. And I'm like, 
what are all these people saying my name? And I can just hear them all saying Jonathan, Jonathan, that's my first name, Jonathan, Jonathan. I'm like, what the, who, who, who I don't even know who you are. I can only identify, <laughs> maybe I can feel the presence of maybe two or three people that I've known in there to everybody. I don't know who you are, <laughs> you know, but wow. I'm thankful that they came on my behalf. Um, and actually one of them actually is, it was a male presence. Um, I was actually astral projecting. And as I'm astral projecting, this man comes like flying past me. And I'm like, who is this? He looks at me and he smiles at me. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. who is this? And I smile back and I'm like, okay, all right, you know, whatever. So I'm like, okay, I'm going along. And after I astral project, he actually is in the room now. And he comes right next to my right hand and he puts his right hand on top of mine. And basically was trying to reassure me like, hey, everything's gonna be all good. Everything, you're good. Everybody's here for you, you're okay. After the Reiki healer, healing she actually mentioned it the reiki was like there was someone who came and grabbed your hand did you feel that i was like yeah i did Did you see that she's like yeah i actually have to sit right here near your right hand to do your to fix your heart chakra and i couldn't stand there because he basically was like hey get out of my way (laughs) right so she's like i had to go another way to do your heart chakra which is very difficult but i got it done anyway but he basically was like nudging me over and saying hey get out the way this is a this is a a (laughs) emotional moment right now so it was very good um uh and you know if you go see a good reiki they are able to tell you a lot of your gifts that you didn't know um like like I stated in my first podcast, I believe that I was always in denial about my gifts, about my mediumship gifts. I was like, this is not happening, right? And I remember going into the Reiki healing and I sat down and like two minutes of my conversation, she was like, she stops me in the middle of my conversation. She was like, did you know that you're a medium? I was like, yeah, I know. She's like, oh, okay. She's like, I just want to make sure because a lot of people that I, I mentioned, I can f- sense that about them, they are in denial, but I'm glad that you are, that you are aware, you know? And then after the Reiki healing, she was like, um, yeah, there's only been two times of my life, and she's done Reiki for a long time. And she's like, there's only been two times in my life, in my career, me doing Reiki healing, which I've met someone who has as many gifts as you have. She's like, you have to hone your gifts. Wow. I, I, yeah. So it made me feel like, whoa, like, what do you mean I have a lot of gifts? And I kind of felt that, but I, I just didn't, I wasn't getting confirmation. You know, I was just, yeah. It's just me thinking that I have a lot of gifts. I wasn't really sure. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that um, possibly, you know, even you, if you have the time, go get a Reiki healing. You know, I know. Well, go- yeah. What's funny is um, I was actually thinking about getting a Reiki healing in like two weeks because mm. I'm going to this place. Um, and they do these like floats in sea salt water and magnesium. Ooh. Ooh. So um, a friend told me about it and she's like, it's such a relaxing ex- experience. It's so surreal. And then there's a Reiki healer that works in the same place and you can go to her afterwards. So um, I actually scheduled an appointment like two weeks from now, which is funny that you say that. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. No, it's, but I, it's I had somebody similar. Um, like I saw a psychic for the very, very first time, like back in 2019 when I was in Sedona, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I remember her saying something really similar to me. Um, I was there with my partner, so she did a reading for both of us and Mm -hmm. she did his first because it was his birthday week. Okay. Um, But once she got done with him, she just keeps looking at me and she's like, I'm sorry. I just have to do her reading because she has so much energy. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because when I walked into her shop, it's beautiful. She, of course, has crystals everywhere, tarot cards. Like, it's such a gorgeous shop in Sedona. Um, and I was shaking the entire time I was in her shop for whatever reason. And it wasn't like I was nervous. I wasn't anxious. Like, I was totally fine. Um, I think I just felt an excess of energy. But she does work with archangels. So that could have been, um, you know, what it was. Yeah. I know I know they take a lot of energy to work with. So, sure. yeah. Um, I was shaking the entire time, but then I kind of calmed down a little bit and she started to do my reading and she's like telling me things that I experienced in childhood that like she would have never known otherwise. You know what I mean? And she's like, you know, you've done this in other lifetimes before, like many times. Uh And she proceeds to tell me like how I have these intuitive gifts. And at the time, again, I think every sort of um, very highly sensitive 
intuitive person goes through that point of denial where you kind of just write it <laughs> off and you're like yeah all right <laughs> you know <what> right <laughs> <laughs> um and I'm like okay you know she I left there she gave me some things to think about of course um uh, but I was just kind of like okay like maybe this is just her job to like tell these people these things so that they can come back to her um but she was really tapped in at the same time so I was like you know I'm like I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt but I'm gonna go on with my life so the next day we went to go get our aura photo taken mm -hmm. and um it's again at a place in Sedona it's called Center for the New Age awesome place um a bunch of psychics work there too but there's a woman who reads auras and her name's auras by Jamie mm -hmm. and we get our aura photos taken um of course my partner goes first and then I go mm -hmm. And she's looking at my photo and she's looking at me and then she's looking at my photo and then she's looking at me and she's like, um, do you know that your aura looks like all of the psychics that work for us here? Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And she showed it to me and then she showed me some of the photos of the psychics that work there. And we all have this sort of like arc of light above us. Mm -hmm. And she's like, these are your spirit team. Like, these are your guides. Like, they're very close to you, as you can see. Um, right. But she's like, all of the psychics that work here have that same arc. Um, and, you know, she kind of compared it to my partners. And, and it's not to say that he doesn't have guides. He, of course, has a spirit team. Sure. Um, it's just more so the, I guess, purpose and connection that I have with them in this lifetime. Right. Um, and I, my world was kind of rocked at that point. I'm like, I was shook. I'm like, how was, how was she telling me like basically the same things that the psychic was telling me the day before. <laughs> and now I'm seeing it physically, like in a picture, almost, right. you know what I mean? So right. it was a very surreal experience because when you do hear that for the first time, it is kind of reassuring, but at the same time, you almost don't know what to do with that information. Um, and I was obviously younger at the time, but um, I have a better understanding of like why that had to happen along my journey now. Right. But looking back on it, I was sort of just like, what is going on? Right. And, and that experience kind of molds you into probably like following your intuition better and to, you know, do research and, and trying to hone your own gifts now, you know. So, yeah, for I, sure. know, I know that, you know. And the experience that I um, had when I was five, you know, that made me um, into a different person now. Um, actually, when I went to go do my Reiki healing, she, like I said, she does a soul retrieval. And she mentioned it. She was like, there was two times in your life where a piece of yourself, a soul left because of trauma. And she, the first thing she mentioned, she's like, when you were five years old, something happened to you when you were five that was super, super traumatic. And that a piece of your five-year-old self left because of that trauma mm. so you're, you're you've been walking around living your life and you were having been whole she said so i was able to find the piece of yourself uh and put them back into yourself you know and so she's like you know over the next week or so you have to do some inner work basically saying look at yourself in the mirror and say um, i'm sorry that you left welcome home i love you you know and say that every single oh, day oh i love that yeah right and then you know I felt afterwards, I felt right after the Reiki healing, I actually went to the bathroom right after. And I looked myself in the mirror and I'm like, I don't look like this. What what's going on? That's not I don't look like this. Mm. Right? And I was actually shook about how I looked in the mirror. I was like, who what the hell is this? This is not who I look like. <laughs> and I come out of the bathroom and I'm like shook. I'm stunned, right? She can see it in my face. And so she's like, Is it, are you okay? I was like, why does my face look different? She's like, <laughs> your face doesn't look different. You're actually seeing exactly how you look now because you're whole. When wow. you have those two parts of your life that was the two parts of your, your, your being that was left because of trauma, when I brought those two parts back, you are now whole. And I'm telling you, and this is not a fluke, I feel different. I, I, I speak different. I feel emotionally connected with myself more. I'm, a lot of things change like my hair grows faster my my beard hair grows faster like I feel <laughs> uh, like an inch taller like it just feels so different as so I'm like if anybody has never done a, a soul retrieval you know do it um do it I know my older sister has something um had it done to herself and she does feel 
a lot different. Like she even looks different. She feels different. Her her uh, personality is different. Is like you're whole now. So it was just it's it's an amazing amazing feeling uh, when you feel uh, complete when you feel healed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. That that's deep. Like yeah. that's such an amazing. I love that story. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's so true. When you feel whole and complete because we all are on a soul level but when you actually feel it and you and you know what it feels like to be it Mm -hmm. like all of these different lost parts of you kind of come to light right and you discover all these different parts of yourself and like you said it even manifests differently for you like you look different you feel different um you're probably also calling in different things in your life compared to what you were before Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i've realized that my gifts now I, of course, I embrace my gifts and they come more frequent now that I'm able to actually have more control. Of course, I'm, I'm learning and studying every day to uh, master my gifts, of course, because um, I'm not a master at it yet. Um, but, you know, um, just like uh, the experience I had with you was uh, me uh, testing it, um, seeing if it's true or not, you know. Um, and if I'm able to actually give information to someone and they're actually confirmed that it's accurate, then I know that it's not a fluke, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing that I had a problem with a long time ago. It's like, is this a fluke? You know? Yes. Um, and yeah, because we can psych ourselves out for sure. Absolutely. You know, it's <laughs> absolutely. A conscious mind will always tell us that it's not real, right? It's our subconscious that's trying to scream and say, hey, no, what you're seeing is real. Hey, listen to me. Um, you know, I know I'm behind, I'm back here, but hey, I'm not lost. Listen to mm-hmm. me now. Um, so, and I know I mentioned to my, in my, I think in my first podcast is when I went to uh, one of my aunt's funerals, um, you know, and we, it was, it was, it was a crazy, crazy experience that I was at uh, my aunt's funeral, um, sad enough, and she had this picture. We had this picture uh, up on like this mount and she hated that picture when she was alive she hated the picture (laughs) and uh she expressed how she hated this photo but everyone loved the photo it's like no you look gorgeous we love this photo right and so at the funeral of course they had the photo up on the mount right and it was outside of course and the photo was a huge poster photo kept getting knocked off the mount (laughs) and they had to, my cousin, who was um, her daughter, had to get duct tape and tape it around the mount in order to keep it there. And I remember wow. her trying to still knock it off the mount. And <laughs> I'm looking and I'm focusing. And I'm like, why is this happening? And then I can see my aunt appear. And when she realized that I can see her at that time, she looked directly at me. And I'm like way in the back. She looked directly at me and she puts her finger over her mouth as to just to shh, don't say anything <laughs> to nobody. Like, don't say nothing, right? And I'm like, did this happen? Like, what is happening, right? So I was very in denial from that point. I was like, there's no way I seen that, right? There's yep. no absolute possible way I've seen that. But now, you know, of me uh, coming into my truth, I know that of course it was real, of course. You know, she's in my circle. She's actually one of my people that I talk to um, when I need advice. And uh, of course, when she or when she, uh, you know, in, in the real waking life, she was she's very stern woman. Very. Hey, do this now. I don't care. Mm. What you say. I don't care what you say. Do it now. And she's like that. Um, and and in, in the spirit realm right now, you know, she's very stern with me. If I come to her have a problem and she's, you know, she's quick to say, boy, don't be stupid. Right. <laughs> you know, I noticed that with our ancestors, um, a lot of them that had very strong, fiery personalities, um, you know, in the physical world, they're the same way as, you know, on a soul level, mm-hmm. um, you know, with I feel very much more connected um, with my who I believe to be my great grandmother when you, um, you know, told me about that, about her standing behind me in my podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's funny is in my filming room, which I'm in right now, it's like, I always see the light orbs in here when I'm when I'm recording when I'm filming so like I know they're here with me um, but it was just nice to hear that reassurance when you shared that with me um, but I feel so much more connected with her and, and now that I know it's like for sure her uh-huh. um, I can see now in the ways that her personality sort of came through because that side of my family is so like <laughs> stern and blunt and fiery and I've seen it manifest where like you know 
if somebody doesn't have the best intention towards me about something or they like you know do one of those like backhanded comments or like a slight insult to me moments after something will happen to them it's it's so crazy to me Mm -hmm. like just to witness it in real time Mm -hmm. um it actually just kind of happened a few minutes ago i was um talking to my mom downstairs and she um like she kind of said something smart to me Mm -hmm. and i obviously didn't have any bad intentions like i'm just going downstairs going about my day but she was just voicing like something that she was sort of like jealous about um when it came to me so she had a knife in her hand and (laughs) she dropped it directly next to her foot as if like a warning of like hey like you know don't calm fuck down. with her yeah, yeah like be nice to her calm down she didn't do anything to you right um yeah, relax. And, yeah and stuff like that happens all the time like all the time who else would that be but like a grandma or great grandmother right yeah you know if you if you look at the the actual demeanor of our grandmother or great grandmother they're always very protective over their grandchild always. exactly and they will they will fight their own child and say hey don't you talk to them like that you leave them yeah alone. exactly they will, fight the, they will fight their own kid over their grandchild they're not yes. playing they don't play they're like no this is my baby exactly you know, uh, you're not going to do that you know so hey listen that's good to have her in her in your circle for sure i mean she's she can tell she's very very proud of you um for sure um she has a uh, something that you wear that she's actually connected to i don't know if there's a necklace or a ring that you wear all the time but she's very very connected to that i mm-hmm. don't know if that's true um but i feel this connection to some type of uh, jewelry that you wear um and she's connected to it she actually loves that that you wear it constantly so i wonder i mean i do wear these two necklaces like every day all the time i never take them off mm-hmm. um they weren't hers per se but they're just they're kind of energy signatures that are like very close to me and I feel like they kind of resonate with me on a metaphysical level Uh um so I wouldn't be surprised if you know she liked these necklaces they do have like Hebrew lettering on them um they're actually I don't know if you've heard of Lior Alexandra they're her brand from Mm -hmm. Alchemy by LA her amulets oh nice yeah so I think right now I'm wearing the prosperity one and I've been wearing it probably for like five months straight <laughs> okay yeah nice what color what what material is it it's gold it's gold i was going to yeah. ask, ask you if there was gold um, yeah that's exactly what i was looking at in my mind that is gold <laughs> yeah yeah oh, wow. it's definitely gold that's awesome that's awesome yeah she's excuse me she's very connected um and very happy um from where you're heading uh in your life and the path that you're taking so you know continue to do what you're doing and um, you know, everything is going to work out for the best, uh, for sure. Uh, keep the positive mind and keep her around, um, for sure. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah she's cool. definitely, I mean, she definitely showed herself earlier when you were giving her her, her flowers. So, yeah, <laughs> she loves you. <laughs> yeah, they, they love talking, they love when you mention them, they love it. They can, they like, oh wow, I'm not here alone, you know, somebody yes. can actually hear it, you know. And that's and that's the one thing that, um, that's the things that being a medium that's the things that we live for right mm-hmm. is to get on the emotional level get the emotion of the spirits and also help people who are living in this plane help them out with that um and it's for me i'm very uh, blessed to be able to feel um the emotion of the spirit as well um and it's very difficult like i said uh, in my empath uh, podcast is that sometimes i will feel the uh, spirits um, emotional level before I see them. Um, I know that I got visited from someone's spirit guide um, as I was sleeping. And I remember them coming into my room and they're projecting their emotions onto me. Very, very sad emotion. Like they needed to tell someone something dire. Mm. Right? And they felt very sad about it because they was trying to give information to a person. They wasn't listening. Um, so I remember waking up and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yes. I have no reason to feel sad. Why yes. do I feel like this? Very, very overwhelming feeling. And then it became overwhelming. That's when I'm like, okay, no, this is not me. This is not me, definitely. And then um, again, uh, the person actually showed up. <laughs> actually, the person actually showed up. The spirit guy actually showed up uh, doing one of our podcasts, um, doing one of our um, clubhouse uh, meetings. 
<laughs> That's so and funny. It was crazy. Like during the clubhouse meeting, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to, I think I was listening to you speak. And I'm like, someone is in my house and they're not supposed to be here. <laughs> and I just see, start hearing them weep. Oh. And I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, I remember reaching out to somebody. Hey, do you hear that? Is it somebody on the, uh, like, is someone on Clubhouse crying? I feel like, like oh. I vaguely remember this. Yeah, too. Like, yeah, like, is someone on Clubhouse crying? And they're like, no. I'm like, what the, what is going on? Who's crying? And I'm like, they're like, oh, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, oh. And then I start to actually open up my mind's eye, right? It's a mind's eye, mind's ears to hear and see and listen to actually what was going on. And that's when I was able to hear and see the presence. Like, oh, you've been here, right? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, you're you're the one. So it's, it's a great actually feeling. It's very overwhelming. Very, very overwhelming. Just like how you were feeling that uh, when you were saying that you went to um, Arizona with your partner and you were feeling that energy in that room. You're feeling the vibration in that room, the different vibrations. And it happened to me too when I went to go uh, see my reiki healer she as soon as i walked into the room like into her her shop i'm like whoa it was very very like overwhelming like yes golfing thing like something just like took a tarp and like threw it over you like what is this yes okay like get off of me i don't like like what is this right very very overwhelming feeling that's because you're connected to it a lot of people will walk into that shop and not feel anything Yep. You know, and then you're, you know, you're blessed to actually be able to feel that. Um, so I'm like, listen, take these gifts and hone them and be proud of them because they're not a curse, they're a gift. And we have to use them to our advantage. We have to use them to help people, you know, so. For sure. And, I, you know, bringing up that, that story actually reminds me of an experience I had when I was like, maybe I think I was like 11 mm-hmm. around there, give or take, um, maybe 10. I lived in a different house from what I live now. Um, my mom and I actually lived with my aunt at the time. Mm-hmm. And I lived upstairs in a room that was like across from theirs, but I hated like sleeping by myself or like in the room by myself. Sure. Um, because I just felt such subtle energies so strongly. Mm-hmm. And I remember one night going to sleep. So my body was kind of drifting off, but my mind was aware and awake. And you could probably even say, looking back now, that my mind's eye was awake and and open. Mm -hmm. And I felt someone standing like in front of me. Mm. And I felt this overwhelming fear. And so I opened my eyes and I saw this little girl standing there. She had like an old dress on, Mm. um, like, definitely not from this time period um and i was i'm gonna be honest with you i was scared like i was terrified because this was like the first time i think i had ever even experienced an overwhelming sense of fear and saw something like that Mm -hmm. i immediately shut my eyes and like i just didn't open them for a while yeah to be honest with you i was like under the covers like terrified I think I even like went into my mom's room to sleep with her that night and she's like what is wrong with you like you know um but looking back on it now I'm like maybe she was just as afraid as I was and she just needed help exactly and and that's something that I mentioned too in uh one of my podcasts is that you know very very traumatic experiences happen especially at a young age or even when you're older when you see something like that it's very traumatic um and it might seem like very very like you're terrified like something's going to happen to you majority of time is not um um just like in the movie um sixth sense if you remember yes the boy he was a clairvoyance uh, medium because he was able to hear see and speak to them but every instant that he had with the spirit it was very traumatic like he was so terrified he would run he would scream he would pass out because of how afraid he was (laughs) literally me (laughs) yeah right (laughs) and and then later on in the movie you start to realize you know when he went to that funeral of the little girl and she came to him and she like freaked him out he screamed and ran out the ran out the room and then he's Mm -hmm. like you know what let me calm down let me go back and let me see it again because then he realized that she wasn't trying to scare him yeah she's just traumatic she's like she's she's very overly emotional Right. Yes. They're, 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 so they just want like they're very forceful. They're like, hey, I need your help. Come, 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 yeah. you know, you don't 
Especially if they went through a traumatic, you know, transition yeah. themselves. Exactly. Yes. Then they're, they're kind of echoing that same life experience that they had. And they're like, I need to tell somebody I'm not mm-hmm. finished here yet. You know, and that's something that uh, it's actually good to um, be able to help uh, using your gifts to help these spirits. Because some of them are here and they're not, um, they need to know how to pass on. You know, not not everyone, sad to say, not every one of our ancestors um, that pass on become into our circle or are, um, are able to stay here with us to help right. our They're passed on. They're, they move on to something else. Mm-hmm. You know, they might move on to um, uh, work on themselves to become higher. And then they are able to reincarnate themselves into the next life. You know, and that's a beautiful thing. Not everyone gets to stay here and be spirit guys. Not everyone gets to stay here and be in our circle, um, which is uh, which is sad. I know one of my ancestors, she's passed on now. She's gone. You know, the last time I spoke to her, I spoke to her one. Last time I spoke to her is when um, I had a party and she was there. Um, and she didn't say goodbye, you know, and it's very sad for me to even think about that. I know that I can probably reach out to her and see if she can contact me. Um, but I know, I know the reason why she's gone is because she's like, okay, I, you know, I've done everything I need to do for you. You know, you're, uh, my, my job is done. It's time for me to move forward. Um, and it's very sad when they do, um, cause they don't say goodbye at all. They don't want that. Right. They don't want that emotional uh, connection right there where you have they have to say goodbye they would never say goodbye they would just up and leave which mm-hmm. is very very sad um but you know just uh, all you have to do is, is is stay on the same path that they kind of set for you and and know that their blessing is still coming for you so um even though they're not here physically or, or in that world for you they're they're still giving their love out so it's great it's great to see yes um was something else that I was going to mention too. I cannot remember. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything that you else you want to uh, mention? Um. Well, you know, I'm thinking about the one woman you said she will never tell you her name. Uh-huh. Um. I I guess that doesn't happen with everybody. I I'm like maybe she's just ornery and just doesn't want to tell you and she wants to tease you because I feel that my a uh, part of my spirit team has told me their name. Uh-huh. Um. And I did set an intention to like get to know them better and, and kind of have them introduce themselves to me because it's like this was around the time where I'm like kind of just discovering that I have all these guys after this uh-huh. trip to Sedona. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, you guys obviously have known me my entire life, but right. I have to get to know you now is kind of what it feels like. Uh-huh. Um, so I set out the intention to um, receive it in my dreams, but... Uh-huh they didn't give it to me in my dreams like I thought they would sure. um, or even in the hypnagogic hypnopompic state because they'll they'll sometimes like greet me when I'm waking up or you know as I'm falling asleep if I don't feel safe like I've had my ancestors tell me to like go grab my crystals and put them underneath my pillow right um, but for them they really manifest themselves like physically through a synchronicity for me um, so there was a I think it was, might have been like the day after I set this intention. I set out to go somewhere. I forget where I was going, but I was leaving my house and I'm at a red light and I just happened to look up and I see the word Theo on somebody's mm-hmm. license plate. And I'm like, who the hell is Theo? Right. <laughs> you know? And then I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I set an intention to get to know my guides and uh-huh. like maybe that's their name, you know? And, I'm, and I've never heard the name before in like an angel sense or anything like that. So right. I, I Google it just to see like if anybody else has talked about like a spirit guide named Theo and like maybe I share that with them. Right. Well, I end up discovering that there is an, an entire group of archangels named Theo that a woman named... Um, I think her name's Sheila Gillette. Mm-hmm. Um, she channels them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, is is this what I'm thinking it is? Like, am I channeling the same group just, you know, in a different way than she channels maybe? Because um, then I end up discovering that she does like interviews where she channels them. Um, she's kind of similar to um, the woman that wrote the Law of Attraction books. Her name okay. is escaping me right now, but yeah. I know she channels someone as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of the the vibe that I get from her, and right. I just I just thought it was very interesting. But at the same time, you're kind of like, well, if that is them, like, why aren't they manifesting the same way mm-hmm. for me as they are for her? Right. Well, this on a different perspective. You know, they're not going to manifest 
as the same type of spirit guide as someone else is as they are with you you know they might be there for your protection or they might be there for um like a, as we call it like a master teacher to teach you about your spirituality and may maybe like push you further with your spirituality or your gifts than other um other spirit guides so mm. um that theo word which is great that you uh said that uh that because that's something i said in my my podcast like they won't physically come out out their mouth and say it you will see a name come from somewhere and you were just like what the, what is that name I don't, why do i know that name and it's like yeah you would just automatically know that that's one of my spirit guys for sure because you set that intention to right yes um, and i personally probably have seen her name many a times <laughs> for me i'm stubborn i want her to do even though i know she won't <laughs> I'm trying to trick her and to get her to say it, you know, and it's not <laughs> going to. I know she's not, but I, it's 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 like a game to me where I'm like, "Hey, what's your name again?" <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. like, "Hey, before you leave, what's your name again?" You know, and she just looks at me, smiles and walks away. I'm like, "Okay, thank you. Nice talking to you, right?" You know, so um I know I, I read this book and um she's a person I can't remember the name of the author. She's a medium and uh something that she said too where she was looking for the names of her spirit guides when she was in a meditation and she was meeting one of her spirit guides and i think she uh, something a name popped in her head was like melvin right and she was like mm-hmm. melvin that's your name and he immediately like accepted that name like this is my name you know um mm. and that's the name let's just say this maybe that name theo right might not be theo or somebody else's like if he's connected with the spirit with someone else that uses him as a spirit guide maybe that his name is not Theo maybe oh, his name okay. is Theo only for you right yeah like that energetic signature is only for you and they exactly. have a different energetic signature for someone else right because he might look he would look different than anybody else would see him you know yeah. um, he has his, he would just he would they look and they manifest themselves as someone that makes you feel comfortable right because if um, they don't show themselves as something that makes you feel comfortable you're not going to accept it you're going to think that maybe it's a fluke or you know whatever and i don't i don't you know if you see if you if you're dreaming and you see this person and and you don't feel comfortable with how they look you're going to just say oh it's just a dream whatever mm-hmm. i don't care you're going to blow it off so they make themselves uh, appealing to your to your eye and so say like oh okay yeah, that makes sense right you know so yeah. um like i know my uh, one of my spirit guys she's uh, appealing to me cuz she makes me feel comfortable like how she looks makes me feel comfortable you know and i'm okay with being in her presence so yeah it's it's a whole thing spirit guides are definitely powerful um love them to death <laughs> it, it's it's actually great that uh, um when i got information that they were there before you were born i was just like whoa and they were just like set like hey this is who you're going to be you know here you on tiara's plane right now you're on tiara's uh group mm-hmm. you're going to protect her when she was a, since she's been born you protect her all her life no matter what and yeah. i feel that comfort into that you know and it's um you know and honestly when i was 5 years old and i started to experience my abilities um i know that they didn't interfere with they could have interfered with that spirit that was causing me trouble but they didn't for a reason if they interfered would i be the person i am now my abilities will be escaped from me i would not even known that i was a medium correct mm, they would yeah. they would interfere and like hey you're not going to do this to him leave him alone i would even know that i'm a medium mm-hmm. so they let me go through that and you know and even thinking back i can still go back in time and feel exactly how i felt when i was 5 years old every single day it was the most terrifying thing ever yeah very ever. traumatic it was like and i feel sad for myself I feel absolutely sad and I feel um like hey man if I was if I if I can go back in time and give myself a hug I would you know oh, it's yeah. very very traumatic and you know thankfully I had a great family um you know my mom and my sisters that they didn't judge me on it you know even though I thought maybe I was making this up and I didn't think that my mom I thought that my mom maybe thought I was making it up but you know talking to her and recently I realized that she think she actually believed me Oh yeah. It was great. So you had that support system there. Exactly. You know, can I then I go back to think about how my mom would respond to when I would 
do this flip out, when I do these fits and whenever I'm seeing a certain spirit, she wouldn't say specifically, you know, everything is about how you say things, right? She wouldn't say specifically, there's nothing there. Because mm-hmm. if she said there's nothing there, it would basically saying, Jonathan, you're making it up. Yeah. And that's how we become disillusioned when it comes to our intuition as well. Because, exactly. You know, we're programmed to believe our intuition is something that is sort of, you know, you're disillusioned. It's not there. It's completely imaginary. Right. And yeah, it's it's great that I finally figured it out. And the first thing she would say and say, I would tell him like, oh, he's right here to my mom. He's right here. Tell him to leave me alone. And she said, she would say, Jonathan, I don't see him, but she wouldn't say he's not there. And right. She, I'm like, mom, but he's there. And she's like, okay. And then she would say, hey, leave him alone. And that made me feel comfortable. Yeah. And because she didn't. And then come to find out, she told me this recently when I was talking to her about my gifts. And, you know, she's very supportive about it. She's like, no, this is, I, I believe that everything you were seeing is true. And, um, and she, I remember her telling her husband at the time, um, hey, you know, I don't think Jonathan's crazy. He's seeing something. Mm-hmm. He is seeing something. He's not crazy. I believe him. He's seeing something. And of course, she didn't tell me that when I was young, but uh, her telling me that now is great. And, you know, I was able to talk to my sisters and tell them that this is what I'm doing with my podcast. You know, it took, it took like, it took a lot of uh, courage for me to actually do this podcast, right? Um, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. You're you're being vulnerable in so many different ways. Exactly. You know, and I, I was I'm, I'm actually blessed about how many people are accepted to, to this side of me, because um, like I said, they don't know this about me. And some people, uh, you know, my trade is I'm a chef. So my trade is, uh, you know, cooking and people know me of, of being a chef and cooking good food and posting pictures on Instagram, what have you. They don't know this side of me. And me actually coming out with this uh, is very, very vulnerable. And I have a lot of support from my friends as well. Like, hey, you know, uh, this is what you live, man. You know, hey, this is how you live your life. And this is a truth for you. Hey, I support you. So it's great to have that. There's some people who out there who, who haven't supported me in this. And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't believe in that. That's crazy. You know, and which is fine, which is great. Um, but I can't hide my truth from it. So, um, the reason why I started this podcast in general is because I actually had this guy who um, does natal charts. Oh my God, he's amazing. JR, listen. Yeah. Ooh, he was so good. And he was basically telling me, he was like, you know, you, you're, you're one of your biggest gifts that you have is communication. Is you're able to communicate very, very well. So I think there's, you need to do something within communication and it's under a different normal way of conversation it doesn't really some people don't have this conversation you need to do it and literally a week prior and i was like maybe i should do a podcast <laughs> maybe i should do a podcast about my abilities everything that i experienced and, and then when i did the his the native chart reading he was like yeah you need to do something with communication that puts you out in front of everyone makes you vulnerable it has it changes the way people see you and you have to put it out there and it's under a different tone of conversation it's not the mm. same. And I'm like, yo, this man is good. Like, you know, Yeah, you'll have to give me his information. I love getting I read by different astrologers because oh, I can I read it myself, but I feel getting it from somebody that has like an objective standpoint that doesn't really know you is like a really good thing to do. Right. And he's so good. He's good. He, um, you know, he does NATO chart reading. He does a 12 month NATO chart reading, which I'm going to do. Of course, he he recommends that towards your your your. Um, your solar your birthday, return yeah, yeah. Your birthday he's like hey do you and i didn't do mine um of course my birthday's in february so he's like hey i was like hey do you think i should go ahead and because i was gonna book him like i'm just gonna book him like tomorrow to yeah do my 12 months that's how good it was and you know he were he was able to tell me a lot of things that happened to me recently he can give me the dates and time like it was wow. just like he were he was you know not only did he said oh this is what happened to you at your birth now this is what's happening to you now and this was going to happen to you next six months eight eight months and he put a little bit of that 12 mark uh 12 month nato chart reading into a regular nato chart reading which is great he did that for just free which is awesome it was a great guy and he was able to tell me a lot of things and i'm like how do you know the date of this thing happening 
Oh, there's ways. There's yeah, definitely it's, ways. It's 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 yeah, it's definitely ways. He's um, it was so good at. I'll have to do the natal because my birthday was just five days ago, so I feel like yeah, that would probably be a great time. Yeah, you should absolutely because it's it's great. Um, actually, I got recommended him by him by my um, my Ricky healer, and she oh, was cool. like, yeah, she was. I was like, do you know anybody can do natal chart reading? She was like, yes. I she's I swear by this guy. And I was like, really? She was like, I highly recommend him. She was like. He predicted my second child to date. Oof. I said, really? She's like, the day that he knew he knew that my child was gonna be conceived and born, the wow. date. And I said, whoa, that's crazy. He's good. He's really good. Um, and this is what he does, you know, this is his job. You know, a lot of people do, you know, native chart readings and they do other things like for work. He's like, no, I do this. And he's like, I don't. And I was talking to him that he he's trying to write a book actually, which is great. Um, that he's using astrology on um, like for um, bets and um, the stock market and things like that. Oh yeah, he, yeah, he d- does that. I forgot what that's called, but he does. Um, he uses that to his advantage. So he's like, I'm writing a book to to do that because I'm able to uh, look at different parts of you know the the energies in the world and figure out what's going to happen so i place bets and i place you know the stock market crypto market stuff like that yeah but he's honest honestly i will give you the information when we're done with this podcast but yes please i mean yes. that sounds amazing do you have you ever shared your sun moon and rising with your audience yes i oh no my audience no i'm sorry my dog is drinking water out of this room right now <laughs> give me a second max <laughs> He said, I'm thirsty. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I don't care if you're doing this. He is <laughs> drinking up a storm. He's living his best life. Yeah, he's like, I don't care about this. Whatever, I'm thirsty. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, Aquarius, um, um, sun, moon, I believe. What is my moon? Jeez, what is my moon? Hold on. My rising is Capricorn. Oh, lots my moon of Saturn is- energy. Yeah, I think my moon is... I think my moon is Capricorn as well. I, believe, I think. I can't remember my moon. I'm sorry. I cannot remember my moon. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cap Rising, you know, and I, I, <laughs> Aquarius and I think Cap Rising is a very uh, crazy mix. That's what I hear. So Yeah. Well, uh, what's interesting to me is a lot of intuitive people have very heavy Saturn energy. Mm. And, you know, Saturn obviously is the planet that rules over time. Um, fate, consequences, boundaries, limitations, um, you know, things of that nature. And Mm -hmm. it's just a very karmic planet. So I always find it so interesting that a lot of people that are intuitive have heavy Saturn energy. Yeah. Yeah. He he mentioned that um, when he looked at my chart, you know, everybody, when they see my chart, they said the first thing they say is, whoa. (laughs) And that's the first thing he said to me. um, And when I first met him, when we did uh, my natal chart reading, he was like, has anybody ever told you how interesting your chart is? I was like, yeah, I hear that. I was like, but I don't understand when they say that. I don't get what it means. He was like, wow. Yes. It's very, very like interesting. Very, it's a lot going on in your chart. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, he was able to tell me a lot of things, you know, and it was like, wow, you know, he's able to tell me something that happened to me in my past life. And he was like, yeah, you see this here? Something something that you happened to you in your past life and it was so traumatic and you wasn't really happy with it so what it did was transform to this life and it, it brought itself up in this life to be healed and you have to acknowledge it and heal it so of course i've been uh, acknowledging it and i've been working on healing that part of something that's been carrying uh, with me um so it's listen everyone get your natal chart reading you yeah that? it's so amazing that astrology can like open the gateway to all of that so that you can have awareness and actually like do what you need to do in this lifetime right it is it's definitely amazing it's definitely amazing um okay let me see i think i want to just mention a couple things um i don't know i don't i don't think i mentioned this uh in my previous when i talked about mediumship um i got all this information that people who do tarot readings people who are able to do tarot readings you're you're cert, you're a certain type of me, uh, medium as well um because people think that your the cards itself are has the energy of power it's that's incorrect the person because the cards are made from a, a machine right so they they hold no energy to them 
it's the person who is using the cards and they're channeling the information from the spirit world and using the card because they can't hear, they can't see, right? The, or, you know, able to talk to the spirit or get the information from the spirit. So they're using the cards, right? As to relay the information. So I, I find that in that sort of type of medium ship channeling, that's what we call it. So they're mm -hmm. channeling the information and using the cards and like, okay, you know, um, the death card or whatever, they're, they're using it as a channel information. They, so the cards is, you're a medium, but the cards is also part of that medium uh, ship uh, point where you're using the cards to, well, you're not, you're using the cards and also the spirit is using the cards to relay the message to you. So yes, put that information out to some people because I know that there's um, probably some people who use the cards um, and are using them accurately. You know, you're, the reason why you're using them accurately is because um, you are using uh, some type of your gifts, your mediumship abilities to do that. Um, yes. I remember actually my trip to Sedona when I spoke to the psychic, she knew I was reading cards at the time. Mm. And she, I had this really, uh, I don't want to say bad habit, but I did have a habit of going back to the book that comes with the cards to sort of reference its meaning and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Um, and she straight up told me, stop using that book. Right. <laughs> she said, you don't need to use the book. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, your inner compass is what is going to, you know, call your attention to certain symbols on the cards, the numbers, the, the you know, sort of suits, the coins, the swords, um, the cups, you know, they all are representative of something. They're all very symbolic of different things that you're sort of meant to interpret. And it's also, I think, a really great um, intuitive tool to sort of exercise that muscle. Right. It is definitely, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I always, I, to me, it's fascinating to, to me, um, actually watch, um, a couple of tarot readings like on YouTube and stuff like that. And I'm like, that is crazy how they're able to do that, you know? And I don't know why I think that it's like, I, Jonathan, you see, uh, spirits, what's wrong with you? Like, why do you think that's <laughs> like, it's like this biggest, but I don't know, for some reason, I feel as though like the reason why they're taking this deck and they're shuffling it and they pull out a card directly it's like is the card manifesting itself as they pick it up or like is it they're picking up the wrong card at the beginning and as soon as they touch it it just switches to another card or that they automatically grab that card because it's the right card to me i'm like it is trippy you know mm, i'm like yeah. i always have a lot of deep thought i think very very deeply <laughs> a lot of things yeah it's like, a very I, like synchronistic I, experience because right. you know <laughs> all of that is coming into accordance with the time you're choosing to shuffle the cards and right. get this reading and the place and the intention like there's so many different layers and elements to a reading right and i always think like what if what if that person didn't shuffle the cards would that card still appear and i have a lot of questions i'm like whoa this is very, <laughs> and you know i ask a lot of questions i have a lot of deep thoughts about a lot of things and, and i'm like i have a lot of questions like what if they didn't shuffle it what if they did only like uh when they only shuffled it twice she mm -hmm. shuffled it three or four times what if she only shuffled it once would that card still appear and i'm like it, it's fascinating to me it's very very fascinating um yeah and then, you know i think tarot readings if you go out and get a tarot reading uh, from uh, someone who does it and they can tell you accurate information about what's happening. Let's see. Yes. It's amazing. It's amazing. I think it's, a, it's it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Um, even though I can, <laughs> I can go into the spirit world uh, and, and, and speak to anything in there. <laughs> right. But I find that more interesting than what I can do. You know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's amazing. It's sort of Love this it. quantum experience because right. you're, you're seeing all the different possibilities all at once and right. you're sort of interpreting what what um, path your client sort of has the most momentum on at the time. Because of course, the, the, the path that they're on is going to integrate and shift so many times within all of these sort of like parallel realities, I guess you could say. Right. But it's more so like which path they have the most momentum on at the time of that reading. Right. Right. It's a very interesting experience. It is. It is. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for the day. You have anything else you want to say, Tara? 
No, I mean, I get, I'm, I guess we could probably talk for hours, but I right. know we shouldn't because right. it's already an hour and 15 minutes in. Right. It's, um, we're, we're, we're doing our thing. <laughs> yes. But right. I mean, it, it was a great conversation. It of was. course, I always enjoy talking to you, artists. You always give me so much insight and you're, you just have so much talent and so much great energy. And I, I love what you're doing with it. I appreciate that. I love it. Do you want to go ahead and plug your Instagram, your information so people can go out and uh, check you out and listen to your podcast? Sure. Yes. Um, so you guys can pretty much find me anywhere and everywhere. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, all Tierra Alicia. It's just my first and last name. Um, and then I also have my podcast called The Wonderverse. And um, that's sort of connected to me on all my socials as well. So you can check me out on all of those. Tune in on those guys. Those are really good information she tells you. I really want to do a podcast. I don't know if you're up to. It's about dreams. We can get. Yes, actually, my next episode is um, gonna be about dreams. Okay. So yeah. um, once I launch season two, I'd love to have you on, artist. If you, Absolutely. If you're open to it. Yeah, because I, I know I mentioned it. I, what I do in my dream world is different than what I, everybody else does. Of course, yeah. I'm able to. Um, actually get sent to the lower realms and actually help people is very very vivid very and cool it's 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 very vivid and I do it um, constantly um, and it's nothing I can control um, and actually that was mentioned uh, to me in my um, my Reiki healing uh, she mentioned that she was like your dreams are very very vivid and she and I was just like yeah no. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really go into it because I was like, we can talk for hours about that. But I was like, yeah, it is. And she was like, it's very, very strange. And I was like, yeah, it is. I've never, you know, I've been doing that since I was a kid. So like she said, I had a lot of gifts that I just need to hone them on. So listen, it's, it's, a, it's a journey for sure. <laughs> yes. You can live whole lifetimes in a dream. Right. You can. You can dream 75 years in advance, like in another life. You Listen. Yeah. I've mm -mm. we're gonna get that to the dream yes we're we'll talk about that in future episodes <laughs> exactly exactly but thanks for uh joining TR. you know I appreciate you joining and thank you for the nice word thank you for the information I think it's a great podcast for sure um hopefully yeah. you know when you do the dream one you can have me on we can have another discussion you know maybe, yes. we, can get, maybe we can get Holly on one of them too she's oh my gosh yes that would Oracle. be such a great one if we did all three of us right Holly I'm, I'm gonna a, manifest that right Holly's a dream oracle guys and she's amazing I love uh, yes. watching her content um especially when she tells you like a lot of things are going to start to manifest in your dreams and it's just like whoa how yep. does she know that um she's really great um I wish I had her information because I would plug it in right now um if you go into my Instagram and you go to people I follow um just look up I think his name is just Holly on there I think she's um at Dream Oracle Holly. I'm pretty go. sure. Okay, yeah. awesome. Go to her, and she has a lot of information, and um, she does a lot of things um, as well. Like if you have, I think daily she does. Hey, if you had a dream, plug it in when she does her stories, and you can say, Hey, I had this information in my dream. What does it mean? And she'll tell you. Um, yep. And it's great. It's awesome. So please look out for her. She's great. Um, all right, guys. This is the end of the podcast. I appreciate you all for joining us again. Until next time. Peace. Bye.